You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One of Penn State's priority targets, Brandon Finney, four-star athlete, cornerback, one of the better ones in the nation, out of the state of Maryland, and more importantly, more coincidentally, I should say, goes to McDonough High School, which has been a pipeline for Penn State. Uh, They lose out to Oregon. Oregon ends up securing this commitment, and it kind of goes back to what we've said. It's just been a roller coaster. Hey, again, you get Troy Hune, you get Max Granville, all in the span of just a couple of days, and then you can try to follow that up with Brandon Finney. He ends up going to Oregon. So something you know, Penn State fans are bragging about and and on this show too, that, hey, they're, they're recruiting all across the country. Well, Oregon uh, does just that, goes all the way across the country and gets Finney, who it seemed to be a, a Penn State, I don't want to say a shoe-in, but most likely a Penn State commit. And then Oregon, out of nowhere, is able to flip the pledge, kind of like Max Granville was with Oklahoma, but ends up choosing Penn State. So you kind of, you get one, you lose one once again. That's just recruiting in today's world. NIL, I'm sure, helped Oregon because they have massive NIL. They do. But they did it. I mean, they got it at the end. Like, this is even bizarre for this era, NIL or not. And I'm sure they recruited him somewhat coming into this. But, like, they put the pressure on Wade in the process. And he's going across the country. Mm -hmm. I would keep an eye on this one. It's still closer to Penn State. I wouldn't say this is dead nails in the coffin. But for now, he's an Oregon duck. It is what it is. I don't know what Penn State can do to change it, but that's what James Franklin makes millions of dollars to figure out. I do not. But th- just keep that one in mind. I'm curious how that goes because Penn State, again, their defense last year was nasty. Shouldn't be a real hard sell, I wouldn't think, moving forward to continue to recruit that kid. Brian, there's a lot of ways that we could, a lot of angles we could look at this from. You know, Brandon Finney going all the way from the East Coast to Oregon. Tizier Denmark had kind of a similar timeline, or at least what you're alluding to. Denmark, who's now a Penn State Nittany Lion and actually enrolled and with the team, was once upon a time committed to Oregon, seemed like a solid commitment, and then flips to the Nittany Lions. So maybe that's the case for Brandon Finney. Now the difference is Denmark is from Pennsylvania. Finney's from Maryland, but that McDonough High School pipeline from a Maryland high school to Penn state current and former players were probably saying, Hey, it's great to play football here. Oregon obviously had the better pitch with, you know, like you said, probably some NIL involved, but you know, who ultimately knows. And remember this Penn state already has three cornerbacks on its roster for the class of 20 area. They already has three cornerback commits in the class of 2025 and two safeties. So five defensive backs in total have already committed to Penn state. Brandon Finney is another cornerback and a really good one. So maybe he thought about that as well. Playing time matters. And Oregon's defense is good too. I think they got one of the better young defenses in the country. Maybe that was a selling point. I still think NIL would be the bigger factor, but everybody wants to play. So being one of four guys at a spot in the class is not ideal. But then again, if you're really that good, you want to compete. So Good luck to him wherever he ends up, whether it's Penn State, Oregon, or whatever. But for now, he is a duck. And I, I'm glad that you still see some optimism here because I and I think I feel the same way. I do. I don't think this recruitment is over. I think that the, the again, he plays at McDonough High School. We're getting ready to talk about another teammate of his, Jeff Exner, who is projected to go to Penn State. He's a wide receiver. So Finney and Exner go up against each other in practice, and they're on the same team when it comes to playing high school football under the Friday night lights here. So maybe that conversation can change. You get Finney on campus for another visit in season, sees whatever the stripe out one of those. But again, it goes back to the point that you've made win the big games. So if Brandon Finney does say, you know what, I'm going to take a, you know, make sure I cover all my bases here. Take another visit to Penn state. You got to, you know, hope he shows up for one of the big games, Ohio state, ideally, and you win that one, but any of them really Washington, right? You play a lot of key opponents that everyone's going to have eyeballs on this year. You don't want to disappoint. And it just goes back to your thing. If you win the big games, everything will take care of itself. That's always been the case. You'll flip kids when you have a season where you exceed expectations. I remember when USC kind of flipped a switch in the early 2000s. It was the middle of the 2002 season. They started like four and two, and then the light went on. They lost like three games over the next four years or something like that. They got everybody down the stretch of those recruiting classes that it was close. They wanted to go play for a winning team. 
Shocker. You know what I mean? That's just, it makes sense. They got kids from Georgia, Colorado, Texas, everywhere. Penn State can do the same thing if they finally beat Ohio State and Michigan. It's that simple. I know everybody talks about that anyway, but that's really the difference between good classes and great. The, the elite kids want to believe, but they're not going to go unless they've already seen it. It's the chicken and the egg. So you got to figure out a way to do it, even if you don't have as much talent. It's hard, but that's the way you get over the top. So that's why this one stings a little bit. Brandon Finney, again, goes to McDonough High School. He has current and past Penn State, former teammates of his that are at Penn State, or at least have that connection to him being a McDonough alum. So that's, I guess, I don't want to say an easy recruitment, but one that Penn State should have won. At the end of the day, they still have five defensive back commits in the class of 2025. Maybe that also played a factor into it. So you can look at it one of two ways. Hey, this really hurts, or you already have a lot of defensive backs as it is, so maybe it's not the worst thing in the world with the other commits that Penn State has gotten over the week here. And I'm going to side with that one. I think Penn State's had too much recruiting success as of late to really let this one linger. But never say never, he could ultimately flip given that he is at McDonough High School.